Welcome to Fly with Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and it's been a bit since I actually sat in the cockpit of one of these virtual airplanes. This is one of my favorite. It is the V-Flight Air Cirrus SR20. Now, it's not the SR22, which is a souped-up version of this aircraft that goes so fast and flies so beautifully. This is the entry-level model, and it still runs three to four hundred thousand dollars brand new in real life but it was only like thirty four dollars on xplane.org when i bought it in 2017. since then it's seen many updates including the inclusion of this brand new well it's not their brand new but they're using the data from laminar researches simulation of the garmin gtn 1000. Now, the Garmin 1000 is an amazing navigation tool that should be in every aircraft because it makes flying so much easier. It's like flying a video game, you know, like a real flight simulator. But in this situation, you've seen me fly this before. Really, I just want to get back into flying. And I'm going to be doing this one post commentary because I think that my X-Plane videos for now on are going to be featured on twitch and we'll be doing them as live streams so hopefully this gets some of you excited for that and it also gives me an opportunity to take a look at my surroundings over here this is k-r-y-y which is none other than cobb county international airport or cobb cullum international mccullum field and if you go out to the scenery gateway, you will see that I actually created the scenery for this airport. It is not exact. It's about as close as I could get with the tools back when I did this. But I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get this updated as more updated tools are brought forth in the very near future by Laminar Research. Anyway, let's get this bird humming and let's get her into the air. Right now we're just setting up our flight plan. Joining us on our takeoff roll over here, we're going to be taking off and flying at an altitude of 8,000 feet, heading towards the east. We're going to be following a route that will be given to us by the air traffic controller inside of the game. So we're practicing with the updated air traffic control system. It ain't perfect, and in fact, I don't see it being much different outside of the voice from what was here before. Still, we're going to try it out. And just in case, I've programmed in a GPS flight plan that we can follow if the in-game, well, if the in-game ATC pisses me off like it normally does. We're going to have to follow it and pretty much just sit back and hope that they give us a route that gets us mostly there. So on this trip, I've been sitting around the house today. It's beautiful outside. The sun is out and it's not going to be out for long. And it's a beautiful temperature outside, about 69 degrees. So I started getting the itch to go out to uh, the beach. And there is no real beach here in Georgia. When I grew up in Long Island, on a day like this, being where I lived, which was in Brightwaters, I would have gone out to Robert Moses or to Oak Beach or to Cedar Beach, one of the beaches out there on uh, Oak Island, and I would have enjoyed a nice spring day, or in this case, late winter, on the beach, feeling the sun on my uh, shoulders and uh, breathing in that beautiful sea air and listening to the waves crash. Something soothing about that. And it made me long for that. I looked at the uh, in-game and the real-life weather, and the weather down in Destin was just horrible. I was going to fly down to Destin or um, Panama Beach City. Um, didn't didn't work out. It just was horrible down there. But I did see a break in the clouds over to the east by Myrtle Beach or Hilton Head, so I decided let's go out to Hilton Head. So I loaded up my aircraft with quite a number of people and decided that I was going to make this trip. So let's go and get on our way. So you can see why I wanted to get out of the Atlanta area. This is the representation of the weather around Atlanta. That's in the stock 
X-Plane 11. Now the scenery that I have in here, right around Cobb McCollum, was actually created using the Ortho 4 XP tool and downloading some of the HD meshes from, oh, oh I think it's Al allpilot.net. Anyway, we are now well on our way towards Hilton Head. And there's just something about V-Flight Air's SR-20, and in this case, the purple and gray one. I just, I saw this one and I said this was going to be my aircraft for today. This is the one that I was going to take to the beach, and it just felt kind of like one of those roadsters that you would just jump into, like a BMW Z, well, I would say a Z4 or Z3, but this carries a little bit more. So maybe uh, one of those newer Porsches that has four seats that really should never have four seats. <laughs> anyway, we're cruising around at about 150 miles per hour ground speed, and that's going to get us to Hilton Head in about an hour and 40 minutes if we follow our directed flight plan. But that's not going to be the case. These guys in air traffic control have already, at this point, set us on a big giant circle around the outside of Atlanta. And, you know, I could see that happening in real life, especially when weather is coming in, because they need the airspace to land, you know, for departing and arriving aircraft at both ATL and PDK. But in this situation, I was just a little bit annoyed that I had to take such a detour. We actually got to fly up over Lake Lanier, go past Gainesville, and then slide back down to what our course was. So, like I said, we're well along the way at this point, uh, maybe about 30 minutes, 40 minutes into the trip to Hilton Head and of course nothing big really ever happens here. You now join me somewhere in the middle of North Carolina I believe getting closer and closer to the coast. I believe at this point we're actually heading towards the Savannah VOR and this is when I started doing a little bit of research on all of the programs that I have to reinstall and all the aircraft I have to reinstall. It's quite a number of them. If you remember, I'm a big GA fan and light aircraft, so I tend to fly a lot of them. And that would be going all the way up to the Twin Otter and Piper Seneca and let's see, what other aircraft do I have that are in these small plane categories? Oh, the Quest Kodiak the caravan, and I see quite a number of aircraft that I do want to purchase over the next few weeks. But I'm only going to be able to get one. And I think that one is going to be the S550 Citation 2 by Carinado. Now Carinado is a company that in the past has created aircraft that had beautiful exteriors and interiors and kind of mushy sounds and not great... Um, not great flight models, or I, I would say the flight models were decent, but the representation, the simulation of the actual aircraft systems weren't. Now for the base Cessna 172, I used the Reality Expansion Pack for that to give it a better, more realistic feel, and that, that actually has worked out very well for me. I also have the Airfoil Lab Cessna 172, which Oh my god, that thing flies so realistically at times, it, it quells my need to get up in the aircraft. But I think that that is something that's going to happen over the next two months. I'm going to get back into the air yet again and try to take my kids up and show them around the uh, Atlanta area from above. I have been missing flying so much. And again, just like my videos, it, it really wasn't anything other than the money it costs to go to school, the time it takes to do my, my homework, and how much business my job, how much work my job actually gives me right now, which I, I can't complain about. I have a wonderful job, and I actually love doing everything I do. So I don't have any ortho photo installed, or ortho scenery installed for this part of the trip. So going into the North Carolina beach area, it's really not going to be as beautiful as it can be with a 
scenery package put together by using Ortho 4 XP. If you don't know what Ortho 4 XP is, and this is your first time over at the, I, I should say the first time that you're looking into X-Plane, Ortho 4 XP gives you, the user, the opportunity to create your own tiles, your own scenery tiles that are hugely more detailed than the tiles that come with it. And then you would just have the Autogen scenery by none other than Laminar Research put on top of it. You can actually download libraries that will give you better Autogen scenery on top of that, and even masks, which in this case I do have some high definition overlays, which are the roads and other things that go on top of the scenery. So I am building out the southeast pretty much, and then I'm going to go build out the southwest because I believe these are going to be the two areas I'm going to be doing most of my flying in in the near future. And mainly because I want to fly around my home and talk to you so I can practice going on flights I might be taking in the future. And then the southwest because, well, that's pilot edge territory and you'll be able to hear me talk to live controllers when I start flying in that area again. Now I've done this in the past. I've come back, I've done some X-Plane videos, got some people excited about it, and then disappeared. That's not going to be the case this time. I now have a system and a setup that's more conducive to me making videos rather rapidly. I've got my PC over on one side of my desk, I got my Mac Mini on the other side of the desk, and it's they're all interconnected when the videos are being recorded. So pretty awesome. So I'm pretty happy about this flight. I, my first couple of flights, I was flying in the uh, Quest Kodiak, and I did record them and decided not to put them up because my flying has been so rough, especially my, my approach skills in the game. Because real life flying and simulation flying, there's, there's a lack of depth perception inside of a flight simulator. So you get so used to having that in real life that you kind of botch landings a lot when you first come back to a simulator. Now there is a way around that. I can just get an Oculus Rift, but then I fear that the actual recordings that I put up aren't going to be very good because the resolution for Oculus Rift just isn't conducive or isn't delightful to watch on something like YouTube. So we've moved ourselves ahead quite a bit here. We're approaching the coast. Hilton Head is off to our left. Savannah is off to our right. And we're about ready to take our turn towards the airport. Now we're going to make a turn to 60 degrees first and then we're going to make a turn to 30 degrees to intercept runway 030 or runway 3 and actually squeak it in for what I would say is one of my best early attempts at landing this aircraft since it's major updates. Now I'm not sure if they updated the flight model though I do see a lot of things saying that it's been updated but this plane is just a pleasure to fly and if you're new to X-Plane I highly recommend V Flight Air's aircraft. So far I have the Grumman American Traveler and Grumman American Tiger. I have the Piper PA-30 Twin Comanche and I have this aircraft and I, I can say that these people over at V-Flight Air put together some beautiful looking aircraft with very realistic operation. I can't say that they're perfect, but they're realistic. I would use the word simulation for perfect, but this is very realistic. And there are some elements to the SR-20 that are not going to be um, put into this particular model. but. We'll leave those for people that actually review the aircraft, or if I ever go back and review the aircraft. Now, I've been a flight sim nut, obviously, for quite some time, for a very long time. I've been flying flight sims since I was in my early teens, and that meant that I was playing them on the uh, TRS-80, the Trash-80. I've had all of the uh, Microsoft flight sim 
products all the way through the latest one, which is almost dead at this point. I even tried to buy Dovetail, well, tried to play Dovetail Games uh, Flight Sim World, but they pulled it before they finished it, and it did have promise, it just wasn't perfect, and what they wanted to do is make it more like a mobile game structure and have you constantly buying things in the game. Wait, isn't that what we do here in X-Plane? Well, kind of. In X-Plane, they, they deliver a great simulator, and they give you the world and all the APIs and everything that you need, and then other companies make the aircraft, which is pretty awesome. But in Flight Sim World, you were going to have to buy all those, all those aircraft through Steam. That really, I think that's what shot them in the foot in the end. Skimming ahead, we're about ready to receive our call to turn towards the airport. The airport is going to be off to our left, about 30 degrees. I'm going to call back. We're going to turn our heading to uh, 030. And I have already gotten the airport in sight, so we can call airport in sight as soon as we make our turn. It's up just above the nose of the aircraft right now. I know it's hard to see, but you know, hopefully YouTube doesn't decrease the quality of this one too much. All right, so we have the field in sight, and it's time to start hand flying this aircraft because we are not going to be doing an RNAV approach. So there we go. We have the, the field in sight. And it's time to lower our nose and then shut down our autopilot right down over here. And now the aircraft is ours. Good. All right, then we just have to slow it down to about 100 knots or lower and just let it settle onto the ground. This aircraft is a beauty to fly and I love the way it handles and I just absolutely love the way that you're able to get this aircraft down onto the ground. It's well, it, it beat my expectations by far. There are some aircraft right now that you can get that are in the 70 to $80 price point that are true simulation aircraft and one of them I'm looking into is the TBM 900 and I'm thinking about that aircraft. It's a little pricey, but if I do get it, I'll be flying it a lot on my stream. I just think that I want to get my scenery done first, and then I'll look into that aircraft. If I do get that aircraft, it might be one that I use for an around-the-world trip. All right, so... And there's our regular instruments. So let's make sure that we have our... Yeah, we just have to make sure our fuel selector is on the right tank. Not the right tank, but the correct tank. It is something that you have to do in this aircraft about every 20 minutes or so. You have to switch tanks. So we just got cleared to land. It's just about... Uh, 20 to 25 degrees above our nose. And this, I think, was one of my better approaches in this aircraft. Of course, the weather that we have in Atlanta with the breeze, which at McCollum would be a slight crosswind today, is not going to be affecting us here. So unusual in this area to have the wind coming from the northeast just makes you think uh, that there may be a system off the coast. I'm just excited about this one. Just wait till you see it. And this scenery, of course, just like I said before, this is stock scenery. I did not load up the Ortho 4 XP here. So we're making this approach, keeping our airspeed well within its limits. Making sure to add in a little bit of flaps. And keeping that nose right just below the horizon over here, pointing right at the numbers. Now we might come in just a tiny bit high, but in the end, 
we're going to settle it down just past the numbers, right in the squeak zone. Now once I get XCAM reloaded, we'll be able to go back and get some really cool replays of some of the landings and takeoffs and other things that go on in the game. You can see a truck driving by over there, just under the right side of our nose. And here we go, the threshold is coming up. There's a little bit of a rudder to get us back onto the center line. And the nose is going to start to flatten out right now, chalking back the throttle to almost zero. Or I should say the power lever. And then holding that nose just above the runway. Right there, just above, and squeak. A little bit flat for landing, but I didn't want to scrape up the tail. And this is where ATC gets just a little bogged down, and so do I. I don't have a lot of the commands mapped to my X-56, and just I don't have all the parts that I used to have out. I normally have my flight yoke and my pedals and my throttle quadrant and a couple of other things but today we're just flying with a straight x56 and we get off well folks that was my first flight back if you want to join me i'm going to be on twitch.tv forward slash star citizen aa i will be streaming both star citizen x plane just like i did before love this game by far it is one of my favorites and you know it's a simulator it's not really a game and the aircraft that you can find for X-Plane 11 right now and the scenery just make it so much better. I am working on getting my Ortho Photo X, you know, Ortho 4 XP uh, photo realistic scenery up and running. So little by little over the next month or two, you will start seeing my flights have much prettier scenery. And here on YouTube, you'll probably be watching my my pre-recorded streams that I've done on Twitch. Folks, you know the drill. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you do subscribe, don't forget to click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. I do have a patron, a Patreon site, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Batgirl. It really helps out the channel and allows me to get some really cool stuff like new planes and occasionally do giveaways. I just did a giveaway for a game called Foundation not too long ago. So if you want to become a patron, it could be for as little as $1 a month over at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Batgirl. And folks, with that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.